Hey there, Seema. My name's Andrew, and I'm the essay corrector here at IELTSpodcast.com. Well done for getting this far in the course, and thank you for submitting your first pieces of work. Now, what normally happens here is I give, well, I read through sentence by sentence, and I just let you know how well you've responded to the task, how well you've structured the essay. Uh, I'll also talk about the language used and whether it was formal and precise enough, and I will correct some grammar along the way. Now, my first point with this essay is that you have used the correct four-paragraph structure. Um, your examples seem to be on point. Okay. So, this question starts with... Doing an enjoyable oops, activity with a child. So we're talking about participating in an enjoyable activity with a child. Group activities, not just what children should do on their own. And then it's better for the development of both skills and imagination than reading. So these are the three like core features of this question that we need to make sure we take into account throughout this essay. So saying that some people think children should only read in their leisure time, uh, it's not really about leisure time, is it? It's just about the development of skills and imagination and whether reading or participating in enjoyable activities is better. And the latter. Don't use our or your uh, in academic writing. It personalizes the essay. So we were in the sentence guide course, we talk about using four sentences per paragraph. Uh, the paragraph should have one core idea and the first sentence introduces that idea. So here we should really say something along the lines of, um, in fact as well, I don't want to include that. Don't use kids either. It's too informal. This is a bit too general. A 
and we need to refer specifically to the other group that does not do this and a quick way to do that is their counterparts and then we need the therefore sentence on the end to explain how this relates back to the question we also need a bit more explanation as to how this happens uh, so maybe talking about how actively thinking about how to win the game strategizing in real time um, demands much more from a child's imagination than the passive activity of reading which just imagines them to imagine which which just requires them to imagine a world and some characters whereas video games require them to strategize in real time it's much more of a mental exercise than is reading so strategizing in real time is a greater mental effort than reading it is likely that it is more effective So good, parents spending time with their children. This incorporates this idea that it's doing an enjoyable activity with a child. This is a bit vague. I know what you mean, but in academic writing, we should try to be as precise as possible. So you, you say that it helps to develop skills and imagination, but you don't explain how it does this. Again, um, participating in group activities, social events requires much more thought than being alone. Always having to think about other people, what they need and what you need to do, um, is a far greater mental effort than reading. So we need to go into more detail in explaining how our point happens. Um, if you agree with the statement that participating in enjoyable activities with children is better for the development of skills and imagination than reading, then you must explain why you believe this. You can't just um, give the example and state the answer. You have to give the example, uh, but you also have to have introduced the idea, explained it fully, then support it with an example, then explain how it relates back to the question. Cool. So you, you understand the structure, you understood the response that, you, that was required of you, but it needs to be further developed. We need more explanation. Consider these questions when writing a body paragraph. What, why, how do you know, and what's the point? What are we talking about? Why is this true? Give me some evidence to support that, and then explain how it relates back to the question. Four sentences every time, and a fully developed idea is those four things. Introduced, expanded, supported, and explained. So let's have a look. So it's not undebatable. We need to talk about uh, something like it is often stated that family members are communicating less with each other nowadays. I agree with the statement to a large extent, or to a large degree. And in this essay, okay, so I am going to is really just an informal way to say I will or I shall. And from daily life. As well, I would say that these need to be, this outline statement needs to be expanded ever so slightly to feature a little bit of detail about what's going to follow in the following paragraphs. 
um, using examples from daily life, such as a few words on this paragraph and a few words on this paragraph. It would literally just add a little tiny bit to this sentence, but adding that detail prepares the reader for what is coming next. Let's use some modal verbs here instead of need to. To settle down is a, a well, in, in IELTS writing, we should try not to use phrasal or prepositional verbs. We should use single worded precise verbs. So we could say before relaxing. And we don't need to talk specifically about them being in bed. Now, there is no example uh, in this paragraph to support what you're saying. Uh, so we need, a, for example, because this here doesn't really relate too much to the question. Because the, the nowadays part of this question, of late, is talking about in modern times. So what's changed in modern times? Because children have always attended extracurricular activities after school. This is not a new thing. So we're trying to talk about new things. What nowadays affects communication negatively? So we could be talking about, this is more on, on point. So one thing that we've done here that's common in IELTS writing is that we've included three different ideas in one paragraph. But this is not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be using one core idea in, in each paragraph that we fully expand and support and explain. See, this is a this is a generalization. You're talking about one house as if it's everybody in the world. Don't use branded names when we can just say tablets. And you're, you're talking here, again, it's, it's a generalization. And we communicate with other people. So once again, you need to support this with a real world example. Um, just giving items that might be used uh, is not a real world example. It needs to be something along the lines of a recent study by Harvard showed that, you know, or um, professionals in the education industry often believe that. It needs to be either a, pro a professional opinion, uh, statistics, or a study, really. They're the best, best supporting examples in academic writing that you can um, use. If you can't find one of those, then something along the lines of like a secondary source, you know, like a like a respected journal article um, or even like, you know, like the Wall Street Journal or, you know, a, a highbrow newspaper. That would be good enough. Cool. So yeah, like I said in the previous one, it, this is you do understand everything you're supposed to do, and I have no worries about you getting a seven or above. But throughout this course, we need to try to flesh out your responses so that they contain more detail, and that they are accurately supported with strong examples. So what you should be doing with these is correcting your own work using these suggestions. In your next email, send me your corrected essays, a list of the errors you feel you made most frequently, as well as um, your new essays. And I'll have them back to you as quickly as possible. Have a great day, Seema. Bye-bye for now.